Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Guess what? Kai Wheats. They sh sent me another email. Said, we got two new meters. You want to review them? Said, you bet. So they sent it to me. Yeah, it's just as simple as that. That's how they work with things. They don't ever say anything like what you're going to do, how long the video is going to be, anything. They just ask you if you want to see them. Say, sure. And they send them. Simple as that. So I got them for free from Kai Wheats and pretty cool meters. This is a pen type. One of the probes is actually the tip of the meter and then you plug in the negative probe in the uh, in the back end. This one has a non-contact voltage sense on the tip and the back end you put two probes. So a little bit different meters. So let's come over here, open them up, take a look at them. We're going to look inside them, open them up, all that kind of stuff. Look at the spec sheet for a minute. And uh, then I'm going to do the testing, I think, in the next video, just so this one's not too long. All right, so we're going to just take a close look at them. All right, and uh, by the way, these things I think are $19.99, but on Amazon it's uh, I think 10% sale, so they're like $18 roughly. So if you want to buy one, uh, please use the link down below. Free way to support the channel, doesn't cost you anything extra when you buy them. So appreciate it, guys. Uh, Hey, let's come over to the bench, take a look at these things. Okay guys, so that's what they look like. Let's go ahead and open them. Uh, I guess we'll start off the smaller package first. Remember, they're both about 20 bucks, about $18 actually with the discount. And let's just see what we have inside. We have our Kiwi's manual for the ST100. Hey, there's a range we can kind of compare these tables probably. Okay, here let's uh, see what's inside there. All right, so, you know, it looks like, I think there's going to be a flashlight on this, and that's your non-contact voltage tester. And it looks like, you know, it's plastic, but it looks like there is the little metallic antenna, so you can put it right into a socket. So that's kind of nice. All right. And we got a bar graph here, it looks like a lighted. And actually there's a little bit of a texture to that. They're kind of soft a little bit. The rest of this is kind of hard plastic. All right, there's no color indication back here, but red and white. So red and black, of course, common. All right, let's take a look, see what else we get. Okay. Um, so what do we get? We've got test leads. And we'll check them out. Now the Kiwi's test seeds have seemed to be pretty decent. Let's take a look at these. Yeah, the 10 amp CE rating, uh, they feel like PVC. I mean, you can see how they just don't straighten out instantly, so they're not uh, silicon. But, you know, they're flexible, at least more flexible than the famous yellow brand we know, which have some of the, well, not some of, probably the worst leads. But, yeah, there's a little bit of a give tension relief on there. And we have our little caps. And these are Cat 3, by the way. Whether, you know, there's only CE. But most of the, I think what you're going to use these for is a Cat 1, Cat 2 environment, right? Going to sockets and stuff like that. Cat 3 is more electrician work behind the panel. And these leads aren't super long, you know. So, about that, you know, however long that is. And we've got some batteries, some Kendall batteries. Heavy duty, it says. But they're trip ways, two trip ways. Okay, we'll have to put the batteries in that thing. Let's see what comes in this guy. Put that stuff over there. And I imagine it's going to be similar. Yeah, okay. Let's see what we have. Two Kendall batteries, same thing. Another manual. You know, I'll do a quick comparison of the specs data. But I almost think they're, you know, my first guess would be they're going to be very similar display on this uh, more multimeter one is a little bit larger 
the pen's just a little bit narrower. You know, it is meant to be a pen. This is kind of big to be a pen, but yeah, so that's more of a pen size, I guess. Okay, and then what do we have here? All right, that's cool. So you can still leave this other cap on. This other cap looks like, yep, comes off too. So that's your, you know, so if you are in a place where voltages, you don't want to short things, that's kind of nice. And then that is nice to keep your, uh, from poking yourself, I guess. All right, so let's take a quick look, compare them. Uh, you can tell they've got their manufacturing process down there. Nice labels, similar labels. This one grip form is back here. You know, I guess you're holding it so you can see the display. And this one is meant for it to be a pan, so the grip is up here. So, little differences. Oh, and there's three bars here, and there's multiple bars here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they do have that soft silicon feel. Uh, and it's interesting. Power button, hold, uh, flashlight, I guess, on this one. Well, I'm not sure. This one looks more like flashlight, but anyway, has a light thing. It was funny, they're just like in reverse of each other, right? <laughs> so, there you go. There's your nice little close-up view. I'll put batteries in. We'll come back and see the displays. Oh, let's see what else. We have a test lead because the other one is built into the pen. And... I'm kind of interested if this is exactly the same one uh, as the black one over here. And it sure looks like it is. Which they have the caps too. So, yeah. Very sharp. I could tell before I even touched them. I mean, you can see how sharp they are. They have the little dimple there so you can uh, put little, you know, if you have those little kind of attachments that kind of clip on. And this cap looks like it clips on down here. Yeah, I think so. And the tension relief on both ends. So, yeah. Same lead, just one of them. Okay, I'll put batteries in. All right. Just taking the battery compartment off of each one. They both have the labeling and the direction of the batteries inside so they show you that okay and they both look very similar you can see the circuit board through them so you don't want your battery leaking inside these because you know you don't want to go down on the board but yeah there you go and they both have these little inserts so you're not screwed into plastic so that's nice too all right so if you like to see the inside of these meters, give me a thumbs up, please. That just took a few screws to take out. See all the screws that came out of this one? A bunch of screws that came out of this one. There was two, three, four to get the board out. This one had two, three, four, five to get the board out. But now to get the case off, if you, another thing you notice is similar construction. They have this rail here with four screws to stiffen this thing up and they have these ribs across here so this thing these things are both very stiff and sturdy so nice construction on the plastic for sure and the meter here we're going to show you the insides of this uh so they're held on really tight like this one especially uh you have to kind of pry it straight up there's a little sticker here uh the, you know you have to remove two but here, let's go ahead. Here, let's take a look at this one first. This is probably going to be easier to want to look at. Okay, we're both looking at it for the first time together. We have our little membrane push buttons with little carbon things that make the contact to these little push buttons here. And other than that, it looks like there's a little relay here. Oh, they are automatic. I think they're both smart meters. A couple PTCs. And some other components. Man, they're pretty small. Transistors and resistors. Here's the display. It's trying to fall apart on me. 
Okay, it's kind of like the Fluke displays with the little pink. And they do use the pink like the updated Fluke ones. But, okay, so it makes the contact there. Wow, here. Holy cow. Want to be careful with all this stuff. And there's that little silicon thing. And that is for the LEDs. This is basically a light bar to bring the light up to the front of the meter. And here's all your LEDs here. Uh, wow, pretty cool. Let's see, I'm trying to pull this off. There we go. There's the antenna with the little IC there. All right, so there we go. I don't know how close I can focus on that. There's the chip. Showing you the bottom of the board there. Pretty nice. Here's a little plastic. Okay, that's covering... That is a housing for the flashlight. Holy smokes. There's a lot of disassembly here. This little plastic thing is a cover for the flashlight. You can see that circuitry. A uh, spring for the battery. Here, here's the other contact for the other end of the batteries. There's your MELF resistors. They use MELF resistors because they're higher power uh, for the same kind of board space because they're taking vertical space as well. So that that's the big thing about MELF resistors, if you ever wondered. Get higher powder. I see an, an inductor right here, so that must be a little power supply from the batteries to bring up the voltage for all the functionality. There's your globla with your uh, all the smarts and everything be underneath it. So, wow. That is going to be some assembly to get this thing back together. And and that's the light pipe, or, you know, the lens, plus the little, well, I guess, a electronic lens to get that little antenna up close. So, wow. Holy smokes. Yeah, that was some disassembly there. Okay, now here's this guy, and he has a little light pipe here for the LED. So this one also has a flashlight. Different thing. And, and there's a little wire connected to our probe up here and whoa uh -oh, just drop some there's our ptcs on this thing very similar there's our melf resistors on that end contact for the battery so a lot of similarities there's our little globlet it's probably a very similar board here's our little contact for our uh, negative probe and there's our display same kind of thing the pink membrane Here's our little contact, same kind of thing as that one, just flipped upside down. Housing's very rugged, very strong. And here's our little silicon thing for the LED light pipe on this guy. And that would be our LEDs right here. So, yeah, very similar parts. There's the relay that was on the other end of the other one. So, very similar but different, right? And here's our little buzzer. Here, let me, I kind of missed a couple of things on this one. There's our buzzer on this guy. And same kind of barrel connections. Very nice. And there's our PTs and relays. So just kind of a flipped over version of the other one. But, wow. If I rotate the board around... Well, there's the globlets. Over here's our PTCs. Our resistors there. Our LED here. Our relays. Here's a little brain child down here for this guy. And a little power supply on this one. Um, oh, yeah, here's a power supply up here for this guy. So... Yeah, same kind of power supply. So a lot of the same circuitry, just some differences because of the two probe technique here and the single probe technique on this one. Wow, now let's see if I can get it back together. All right, so you know normally I, I want to make these videos faster, so I don't want to make you watch me do all this uh, construction deconstruction, but 
this one looks a little bit easier because the display and everything is still in place so I can just put that down and then carefully put the LED in there and Oh, this guy slides down in. The red thing slides down in, so it's captured in plastic. And by the way, pulling it apart was really difficult because it really fits in tight. So, yeah, I'll put the screws in the board. But, yeah, that one been put together pretty easy. Oops. Let's not forget the barrel. Here's a little barrel that kind of fell on the floor when I was pulling it apart. So, and that locks down in there, too. So... There we go. Make sure I get it right so the other half will fit. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. All right, so this one. Maybe I can just put the display... Uh-oh, which way is up or down? <laughs> ay ay ay. All right, we'll give it a go. Um, I'm just taking a guess on that one. And put these back in. Wow. Looks like if I left all that in place, maybe it would have been easier. Okay, those these little rows of contacts are going to touch those little pink with the carbon in between them. So that will sit in there like that. All right. And then I got to get this back on. Okay. There's a little hole. There's a little hole right here where all that fits down in. There we go. That doesn't feel tight. So, okay, that little membrane. Oh, there we go. You just have to push it past that membrane. Then on this end, we have just a double, dual stack there we go it's probably why they don't color them because it's just in one solid piece of plastic but I think they could dye the plastic on one side whoops there's the look at that man I'm bound to forget something so this this seemed fit over the LED all right, so I think I got it figured out. So that little plastic fit down in there, it has those little grooves that it fits tight into, and then the board fits in those, and then it all fits very snug, and, and the LED is forced to be in alignment with that lens. So, yeah, that was pretty, pretty nice detail to attention that they did. At this point, I think the rest of it's just easy, a bunch of screws. All right, somehow I got them back together. And, you know, for small cases, the plastic is just very strong because, you know, it's a small case, so it's fairly easy to make a very strong case. Uh, let me see. I think I, I just noticed, I think I pinched the little plastic cover underneath the case when I put it back together, so <laughs> ah, still came off. All right, clean that display. Yeah, and that one came off when I put it together. I came off my finger. Uh, anyway, there we go. Here, let's push the buttons. Hold it down, probably. Yep, there we go. Wow. You know, they these type this type of display is difficult to see with the lights on. Here, let me turn the light away. In person, I can see them so much better, but... Yeah, they are, they're not super bright displays, they're, uh, I mean, they're plenty, you know, they're easy enough to see in person, but on the camera, with the lights on them, they're really difficult to see. The yellow is not super bright, but I can see live, this one's set up in uh, non-contact voltage. I don't know if that, I guess by default maybe, this one says auto. Let's hit the function button. Okay, uh, zero volts, DC, AC volts, ohms, 
ohms with continuity. See the little thing up here? Looks like a battery thing up there, maybe. Diode function. Hertz. Nanofarads. And there we go. There's our live testing. So if I just touch, I think just a probe by itself without using the negative one, I think I'll get a reading for, you know, live voltages. Oh, this one also has this interesting thing. Uh, phase A. Oh, and then we're back to auto. But on that phase A, I'll have to see. Maybe I... Okay, I'll check out the manual. But anyway, if you have a three phase, it'll tell you which one I think is supposed to be A, B, and C. So maybe we'll see if it'll do the same for line and neutral. Now this one, set the function. There's our auto. Maybe I bring it up closer. Okay. And it has a life too. And then there's a PA. So uh, when I hit function, maybe I hit the other one. Oh, I don't know. Or maybe as I connect, it tells me which one's ABC. There's non contact. So here, should I bring this one up closer so you can see it? Yeah, so, you know, you probably see display probably looks pretty nice there. Um, with the bright lights on, it's not easy to see. So I'm kind of wondering what it looks like outside. But, yeah, there's back to live. So this one has non-contact voltage. And this one has a live. And, well, they both have the live. So there we go. Let's do some testing. And, by the way, you have to hold the buttons down for a moment. Just turn them off, too. I think that's because... You don't want to accidentally have a button get touched and turn them on and run out the battery. So you have to just hold them down for a moment to turn them on. Yeah. They both have the same beeper. I think the functionality is going to, you know, the, is going to be very similar between them because it seems like the same electronics for the meter. All right, guys. Just a quick one on the accuracy of the meter and what it does. I looked at both uh, manuals and... They have the same, which kind of expected. So just kind of cover that. You can see 0.5% accuracy for voltage ranges. They're both 4,000 count meters. You know, they have the same thing. They just have a few different features. But AC, 0.8%. And uh, ohms, 1%. So pretty typical of a lot of meters, like especially 4,000 count meters. Uh, even a lot of 6,000 count meters. And right here, important 50 ohms is where it sees continuity. And uh, the capacitor range up to, it looks like, 4 millifarads. And frequency test up to 4 megahertz. Hey guys, so what do you think? Uh, leave me your comments below what you think about this. Now, 4,000 count meters for being under 20 bucks. About $18 after the 10% Amazon discount. Hey, and by the way, if you use that discount, or if you think about buying one, use that uh, link down below, okay? Um, because that, you know, easy, free way to support the channel. doesn't cost you anything extra. So appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, you know, I can totally see myself using this pen type because when you're probing a circuit and you don't want to, you know, if you're working with someone, sometimes the guy just reads out the, the numbers for you. But when you're working by yourself and you want to make sure that you don't slide off the thing you're reading, maybe short something out, cause even more problems, you know, you can just easily look, just look up at the number and you can read the voltage there. So, yeah, I think that's pretty handy. And both of them have that live voltage uh, ability. I think that's really a safe way to check voltages. The non-contact voltage, you know, is really great that's pretty sensitive too <laughs> but yeah that's a great way to check things you know but if you don't see it there you're not positive that live voltage one gives you i think a just better feel so this one that has both this one has the live both flashlights uh both 4000 count but yeah this pen type i just see as a specialty type meter i just totally see myself using that this one 
Sometimes I get asked from friends and family to look at uh, receptacles or breakers and things like that. And something like that, just having in my glove box, something I can run out and grab. You know, I could see myself carrying this thing around too. Uh, especially just carrying it in a small tool bag when I know I'm going to go check. Usually, I grab another meter. But yeah, just having this in the glove box, I'd have something on hand all the time. Or if I'm traveling, sometimes somebody's relatives had some work done and the electrician may have actually messed up. <laughs> That's happened. And I've uh, wished I had a meter and I had to kind of just, it, yeah, it wasn't easy. But a meter would have made it a lot easier. So something like that I could travel with too. So yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, now I'm going to do some testing. The testing is like another probably 20 minutes. And with two meters, it just felt like, you know, you're testing two meters, you're opening it up two meters, uh, just reviewing two meters together. It just turned out to be a fairly long video. So let me think, or let me know what you guys think about me breaking it up this way, doing the testing in another video and just, you know, looking under the, the hood and all that stuff in this video. So let me know. Appreciate it. And two thumbs up to my patrons. And thanks for those guys buying me a cup of coffee down below that thank you button. I really appreciate that as well. That's pretty awesome. Somebody's beeping at me. Time to go. Okay, thanks guys. See you next time.